All right, what's going on? You're listening to the best fitness and health podcast on the web. It is the Road to Ripped podcast with myself, Greg O'Gallagher, and Christopher Walker. Yes. And today we have a great podcast for you. We have, uh, we're going to be talking about the keys to building muscle, to adding rock hard lean muscle tissue without the fat just want to make that clear because uh, a lot of people talk about muscle building they they show you how to you know gain a lot of size but usually most of it ends up being fat tissue so we're going to give you show you how to add rock hard lean muscle without the fat aye 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 so <laughs> savvy <laughs> yeah we are so okay so all right let's well, what's the what are the keys i think the the main key is basically uh, it's actually something we touched on in the last episode w- with fat loss, uh, mm-hmm. where you basically want to force your body. This is principle based. We'll get into some more specifics, mm-hmm. but principally, you want to force your body to upregulate anabolic hormones mm-hmm. through because of, through training, right? So, and nutrition. But when it can upregulate in, the output of its own growth hormone, testosterone then you're going to uh, put on muscle much easier. And uh, the way to do that through training is to constantly uh, improve the stimulus. So you always want, and that's where progressive overload is an incredible training principle because your body adapts. It's always going to find a new homeostasis uh, no matter what conditions it's under, you know, whether it's negative or positive. Uh, your body's always going to find homeostasis. It's always trending toward that. It, all, all biological systems are trending toward that. Um, so they, they're they always going to try and find it. So you want to make sure that you're forcing it to adapt constantly. So this mm-hmm. could be, and this isn't saying like don't recover, but basically what you want to do is progressively increase the stimulus uh, and then give it time to recover from that, mm-hmm. that uh, increase. And what's going to happen is, is your body is going to release these hormones to adapt to it if because you're giving it no choice but to do that uh, for example if you every week are doing heavy weighted dips and you're slightly increasing the the weight on the dips every single week what's going to happen uh, it's it's like a morphing process is this is especially true if you're using gravity movements like weighted dips weighted mm-hmm. chin-ups that sort of thing uh, you're going to see that your body is is going to be forced to support the muscle groups that are constantly being used, and it the other things will atrophy. It's almost like a it's mm-hmm. a pruning process. It's a it's very common in your nervous system too, uh, just on a on a micro level as well, where your body prunes things. It pr- it's going to prune connections that aren't uh, aren't being used, and it's going to strengthen connections that are being used. Mm-hmm. So this principle holds true with weight training as well. And uh, what you see is that the the if you put a constant you know in- increasing stimulus on certain muscle groups, they're going to grow to compensate for that increased stimulus, and that's at the most basic level what you need to know in terms of uh, the training part. And when we can get into some actual uh, details on that, and then we can also talk about how like uh, some ways to eat to prime your body to grow faster. Um, and this is you know this is the really the big. Um the big challenge in this, you know, in, in the fitness industry is that very, pu- very few people, um, whether it's, you know, fitness authorities, personal trainers, coaches, and even practitioners, very few people come in at, at this angle. Uh, they're just, the, the, there's really little method to the madness. They're just thinking, okay, how many, okay, how many, I got to train six days a week. I got to be doing, you know, 10 sets on my arms, five exercises. I just, they're just going for to, to exhaust themselves in the gym yeah. and rarely, if ever, do they actually end up making uh, strength gains after that initial um, newbie phase. And so you see all these guys working out and they're, 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 they're taking 15 supplements, they're doing, they're, just, they're just doing you know, lighter weights and they're just getting in all this, all this volume and that volume doesn't really trigger that positive adaptation. You know, Chris and I have been saying this for a while, the most direct way to gain muscle to gain the size you want it's 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 foolproof is for you to actually get stronger and on those key lifts so if you're getting strong on those key lifts your muscles will grow um your hormone output will increase and you'll see phenomenal phenomenal results and just to kind of give you a little example i mean you could be in the gym you could be in the gym six days a week killing yourself just grinding out reps and just being in there two hours a day 
And I mean, I think I think one of the reasons why this approach is very popular, you know, that high volume approach, is because it's what um, a lot of the steroid users do, and they already have their hormone output already locked in because exactly. they're taking all the drugs, so they can do whatever. They can go do Z Zumba dance classes and they'll build muscle. But th th so they, they have yeah. all that stuff. There's actually research showing that if you're if you're on <laughs> anabolic steroids, you don't have to do anything. You, you don't do anything. Yeah. yeah. And then and then I think the other thing with steroids is that it increases recovery so fast. You can be in the gym yeah. and recover and get stronger. So a lot of you know those, those big bodybuilders they'll make strength gains on this crazy two hour marathon like workout um, because they have the the hormones are is what drive is, is, is there is what's driving it. But when most naturals do that. And they're trying to stay lean. Then all of a sudden they're overtrained, and they're actually, they're instead of improving their hormone output, they're actually, they're actually putting the brakes on, putting yeah. the brakes on it. And that brings up an important point: is that uh, you need the recovery. That's right. part of the whole equation. Part of the testosterone work principle is keeping, which which basically tell, is a formula telling uh, how to get maximal testosterone output, hormonal output from your training. But the the key caveat is you have to keep it under a stress threshold where you're not overstressing your body. And that, mm -hmm. that requires about an equal amount of recovery time. Uh, so, because you, you don't want to chronically elevate cortisol levels, which mm -hmm. is what happens when you do a lot of super high volume training very often. Uh, you, your cortisol, your main stress hormone, becomes chronically elevated, which chronically suppresses uh, your anabolic hormone production. Mm -hmm. And a good way to kind of test this is, are you making progress every week? If you're making progress every week, you're getting the right amount of rest to training ratio. If you're not, you're, you're probably getting too much of a cortisol response, you're in, and then it, that's actually negating really your ability to actually make that progress. Um, and uh, and so on that you know on that point with all these guys, they're just in the gym all the time, and they're not really seeing that that many results. And you know some people might be like confused, like what is, I don't get it, like but they're putting in twice as much work. They're in the gym two hours. I mean, of, of course they're going to get bigger, especially more than someone that's in the gym three days a week for forty five minutes to to an hour. Well, no. Um, the reality is, is, imagine if you're in the gym every day and you're, you know, you're doing 50 pound dumbbell or say whatever, 70, say 60 pound dumbbells on your on your chest press, and you're doing, you know, you're doing rows with 70 pounds, and you know, doing curls with 35s. If you're just doing those, you know, those the, those same weights on all your lifts for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, eleven months, maybe it takes you a year to go up 10 pounds. Why would you get much bigger? You know, again, your body finds the homeostasis. <laughs> Yeah. It's going to find the balance point. And it will not change. There's no stimulus for it to change. Right. And then, contrarily, if you're in the gym, just three hard, intense sessions. This is sort of what Chris and I do. I think Chris is two days a week now. Yeah. <laughs> but well, still, I'm, going, I'm going to go back to three days. Three days. <laughs> yeah. But he still, you know, it proves the point. But if you're in the gym three days a week, but you're doing these heavy, intense lifts, and you're pushing yourself hard, you're not, you're not overstretching your resources. You know, you're doing four or five good, solid lifts, a few intense sets. And every week you're coming in there and you're like, okay, you know, last week I did, I, I did, you know, five reps and I increased the weight five pounds and you just go for four reps or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to challenge myself a little bit further. Give yourself that, 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 that smallest incremental improvement. And then week after week, you're getting stronger and stronger. And after every month, you're up, you know, five, 10 pounds in, in weight lifted. After six months, you're up 40 pounds. Your body is going to just absolutely morph. There's no way you can't. If you're right now, if right now you're listening to this and you can do, you know, eight, chin-ups right eight chin-ups and then in three months from now you're doing eight chin-ups with with 50 pounds what do you think is going to happen to your body what do you, you think is going to happen to your, your biceps your back it's absolutely going to transform if you're right now you're, you're only shoulder pressing you know 45 pound dumbbells and then in a year you're, you know you fall in proper training you're doing 90 pounds what do you think that's going to do to your physique it's going to make a world of a difference really if no no never will you go into the gym you see someone you know doing uh doing 100 pound dumbbells on the incline press that's like got this flat chest yeah <laughs> it doesn't happen <laughs> yep and so and so this is really uh, um, really the way you should be basing your training off of and week to week you can look and and actually evaluate your own training but okay on my main lifts you know you pick a pick a main lift for your chest your shoulders your back whatever your arms your legs are these increasing or am I just stuck? You should be tracking each and every workout and then comparing it to your la last week's workout and being like, all right, did I do the same weight here? Am I getting stronger? And usually what ends up happening, if you're not getting stronger or you're actually getting weaker, it's usually because you're doing, you're trying to do too much. 
you're, you're in the gym doing way too much. You're, fati- you're over fatiguing yourself. And so instead of you're training yourself to get stronger and build more muscle, you're training yourself just to better handle all this, uh, all this fatigue work. Yep. So that's in terms of training, uh, that, that's really what it comes down to. Um, and if you can do lift explosively, that's also mm-hmm. going to trigger a better hormonal output. Like some right. people like to lift super, super slow. Yeah. But if you can really explode up through the movement, uh, it's going to help a lot. As, as an advantage for your hormones. It does, yeah. Well, why do you think that is? Uh, as they've just found in research that, that the, the more muscle volume you can activate in as short a period of time as possible. Right. With like a heavy amount of load, meaning like work done on the muscle tissue is high, mm-hmm. uh, it elicits a large hormonal response. That makes sense because let's, say you're, let's just say you're bench, bench pressing 200 pounds. If you're bench pressing it up and it's going up, really fast it means that you're, you're expressing a lot more than 200 pounds of effort yeah you're activating all the fast fast twitch fibers as right well to, to make that happen right and then if you're just going slow it means you're using the minimum amount of effort to kind of move it up um so and that's actually you know i've also this is i've, I've also found and a lot of the bodybuilding people are like no four seconds up four seconds down it's it's completely wrong it's actually because remember we're focused on the progressive overload of getting you stronger week to week and it's very difficult to make those strength gains when you're because it's not natural because think about it we're functional human beings we're, we're meant to use our bodies in the real world in nature and so if you have to lift something up you know let's say you're p- p- pushing a rock over your head to put onto something yeah. or whatever it is you're, you're, you're moving some big object or generate any type of force it doesn't make any logical sense to lift it slow yeah why would you lift it slow well imagine even even like the most basic form of uh of physical um interaction with people or like f- basically fighting for example mm-hmm. wrestling fighting mm-hmm. it's all old like people have right. been doing that for that's part just part of human survival um if you do anything slow you're gonna die there's, yeah. there's just a, like you actually have to make these very fast very right. forceful explosive movements mm-hmm. and uh that's just kind of the way our bodies are designed the, the guy who can generate the most force as quickly as possible is the guy who's going to win a fight, yeah. or or hit a home run, or or yeah. hit or, or sprint, or sprint the fastest? Yeah. yeah. So it's crazy to me these guys that go to the gym that try and lift really slow, country in the muscle. Because the reality is they're not. They think that this this is the best way to produce hypertrophy muscle growth, but it's really not. And it's also not training them to be functional, explosive human beings. And it's not eliciting that hormonal response. Um, so this, I mean, we covered training pretty pretty extensively. Uh, yeah. um, there's, there's a couple. Uh, supplements that i think help a lot yeah um there's so creatine which we've talked about before creatine is definitely good uh it's one of the most studied supplements on humans right it's good Um, for for lean for increasing uh lean mass and uh and strength increases testosterone also um Mm -hmm. carnitine increases the availability of androgen binding which is something that that most people don't look at there's there's like certain pieces of the equation that are uh that need to be addressed, and, and if you really want a better edge, especially if you're trying to grow your shoulders, uh, your upper chest, upper back, place uh, you know muscle groups that are high naturally in androgen receptors, but also can increase uh, the amount of androgen receptors available, mm-hmm. then taking something like L-carnitine, L-tartrate, is uh, a really good idea actually because it increases binding site availability for testosterone. We're actually going to be putting this in it. We're doing a couple of formulas that really uh, enhance, you know, really your, your your training, your physique, and we're actually going to be doing one that's going to have uh, the, that combination. Yep. Um, with, it, with also with a good dose of choline to yeah. methylate estrogen. Right. You want to keep estrogen low at all times. Most people battle with high estrogen levels. Mm-hmm. So you can actually get information on that at kinonutrition.com and actually join that. It might be out or, or join the waiting list. Um, so you get exclusive access to that. And what's really cool is, you know, those as you talked about with the carnitine, those androgen receptors, um, those dense areas with androgen receptors, like your shoulders, your upper chest, um, even, you know, the back, um, that's really what contributes that, that, that V-shape. Mm-hmm. And it's that V-shape, that, that wa- the, you know, the broad shoulder, the narrow waist, that's really one of the strongest signs of physical attraction in, in, in um, uh, for men. So you know your training should really be uh, revolved around really developing that ratio because it looks awesome, it exudes masculinity and power, and um, it gives you this really awesome kind of that Hollywood look. Um, so that's really important. You know, a few lifts that are really that I think are really solid. You want to be improving on each week for the upper body is your incline press, your overhead press whether it's dumbbell shoulder press or barbell shoulder press and your weighted chin-ups 
those really will build the shoulders, the upper chest, and the back and give you this awesome physique and this great V. And so if you're not improving on those, well, those lifts each and every month, then your training is not optimized in the least. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. That's the, so, probably the keys to muscle building, I think, for... Yeah, I guess you want to talk about nutrition or save that for another episode? Uh, we could, well, let's... I think nutrition going to surplus. I think the biggest, yeah. the biggest, but not too big of a surplus. Right. Um, the the biggest thing that that both of us see quite often is usually kind of frustrates me, where people identify themselves as hard gainers. For example, mm-hmm. they're like, "I'm I'm a hard gainer," and and that alone by by assuming an identity like that, it you're traps automatically you in it. trapping yourself, you're trapping yourself in it. Yeah, and that's that's probably the biggest problem with, with people that. Uh, want to gain muscle in general they say i'm a hard gainer oh no matter what i eat or how much i eat i can't gain any weight and the, uh, the, you really look at yeah. their their diet like they're not eating that much at all right I, I know people like this who they they would go until 8 p.m every day to eat something and they'll eat like two pieces of pizza and mm-hmm. drink a coke and and wonder why they weigh 140 pounds right uh, and and all, you also see this phenomenon too with people that used to be overweight and they get lean and they're so scared of gaining the fat again mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, I can't gain muscle. It's like, well, dude, you're really under eating. You're eating 2,100 2, calories a day, and you should be eating 2,800. They're like, but no, I don't want to gain fat. I'm like, but, but it's simple mathematics. If you're burning 25, 2,600 calories a day at minimum, then 28 is a very small surplus. Even if every single calorie went to fat tissue, which it won't because you're training, if you're training properly, it will absolutely not. Even if it did, it would take you about a month to gain a couple pounds of fat. So, but... Because you're training, you're, that's going to turn into muscle. Because um, you can actually gain, you know, you can gain, you know, two pounds of muscle, of lean mass a month, no problem. Um, especially when you have room to, to grow um, easily. If you're, so, yeah, eating at eating at a, a little surplus, you know, finding your maintenance, good starting point, you know, for someone that's relatively lean, gets about an hour of exercise a day, is 15 calories per pound. So if you're, you know, 160 pounds, about 2,400 calories, then go about. Two to three hundred above that, you know. Uh, eat 26, 2700 calories a day, and uh, if you want, you can actually fluctuate it. So on your training days, you go up by a lot. Maybe you go up to, you know, you go up to twenty nine hundred. Then your and then on your rest days, a few days a week, um, or four days a week rather, you know, you go down to you know twenty twenty two hundred. And so um, and, and so you can use that to get more calories on your on your training days to kind of get more of an anabolic response. Um, but but yeah, you, you got to be eating enough food. You got to be getting in sufficient protein. I mean, everyone gets that though. No, usually people don't have an issue with getting enough protein on a muscle building plan. Yeah. Um, but, but getting in the, the food there, and I've actually found that really doing an intermittent fasting setup on a muscle building plan with enough calories works beautifully. You get this awesome anabolic response. Seems to be to make uh, staying lean easier, and it just makes the diet so enjoyable. Because when you're eating whatever twenty eight hundred or three thousand calories a day, you fast till lunchtime. You eat this awesome lunch awesome dinner you got a little bit more room for dessert oh my god it's every day is like heaven you know what i don't really understand is when people say that they can't eat enough on a if diet i'm like how do you not eat enough it's so easy it's so easy eating is easy it's eating fun. is it's they gotta be kidding themselves i do not understand that at all yeah you know how easy it is to eat 1200 calories yeah just you know I think sometimes they're trying to do like this crazy bodybuilding diet where they're just eating chicken breast and I couldn't yeah I couldn't eat twelve hundred I, I couldn't eat meals of twelve hundred calories of chicken breast no that would be disgusting so I think they're yeah. trying to do these ridiculous it's like no you can eat real food you can have you know potatoes with butter on it steak you can have you know yeah, stuff I you mean, enjoy one, one big, some chicken tacos one big <laughs> steak with a potato and butter. It's like twelve hundred. Yeah, right there. and the butter you can eat. You know, you can make some. You know, potato wedges. You know, just don't be scared of any macronutrients. So I think some of these guys that have a hard time and they're like, oh, but I, I don't want to eat fat because if I eat fat, I'm going to gain fat. It's like no, put some fat on your stuff. If you don't, you're actually going to negate that hormonal response. If you don't get enough fat. Yeah, enough fat, enough carbs. Yeah, but I know all all Especially these. Especially if you combine the fat and the carbs, it tastes even better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the best. You, yeah. you need it. And so I think a lot of these guys, when they go on muscle building plans, they're too obsessed with like their, they're like they want to keep their fat low or their carb lo- carbs low. Um, usually, it's, they either identify with one or the other. Oh, too much, too much uh, fat's bad. It'll make you fat. Or carbs on a muscle building plan will make you fat. So no, eat real food with with that are have that have proteins, fats, and carbs all together. Get in. Uh, if you get the right amount of calories, you will just gain muscle. 
um, with, with, when your training's dialed in. Having a lower fat or lower carb approach, the same calorie intake actually will make it harder because it will it will uh, mess up with your you know your hormones. And if you don't get enough carbs, it won't support your training and your anabolism. But yeah, that's pretty much pretty much uh, we covered pretty much everything we want to cover. Yeah, so hopefully that that uh, was helpful to you guys. Uh, if, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe in iTunes, on YouTube, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to it. If you have any questions, leave a comment on wherever you can leave comments, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, and we will read them, and we will pick some good ones and talk about it here on the show in future episodes. Uh, we appreciate you listening, and hopefully uh, you're always learning. Just keep learning, and, and we'll keep spreading the truth. So thanks for listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Hell yeah. Make sure to check out KetoNutrition.com. That's where we'll provide you with some awesome, awesome goodies. So, yeah. Goodies. 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 <laughs>